What was the process of getting signed to Steve Aoki's label? I just dropped a demo. Um, the VP of Denmark actually emailed me. He was like, oh, hey, I kind of like this, but do you have other songs? And so I was like, oh, man, this is my chance, you know? Be the sweet woman. Hi everyone, my name is Jenlin and I am the host of this show in Between Bites. We have Sangarong. Sangarang! <laughs> See, I was reading. Okay, we can get it out. We have Sangarang, who is a producer and DJ from Dallas, Texas, and he's recently devoted all of his effort to pursuing music full time. First segment okay. is based off of the track that you made called Sweet Woman. Have you tried any like unusual or exotic sweets? Maybe back when I visited. Burma in 2017, but I don't know the names. It was like street food, and then I was like, oh, oh this looks good, and I tried it. But then I kind of regret trying it because Why? Uh, Did you get sick? Yeah, my stomach was hurting the, yeah, right after. Wow. Uh, you didn't go alone though, right? You went no, I went my family. family, yeah. It was for my grandma's like 75th. Yeah. Oh. I know, yeah. You're, you grew up Christian, and your parents are Christian. Yeah. Were yeah. your grandparents Christian also? Yeah, my mom is like, my grandma is super Christian. Oh. Yeah, she, she would like pray all the time for me. And then, like all day. Is there a big like Burmese community in Dallas? Oh yeah, huge. Really? Yeah, wow. Dallas and Indiana. Yeah, because we're Chin, so we celebrate. We, no, we really just do like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Wow. We don't do all the other stuff. Actually, my mom hates Halloween. Yeah, she's Yo, like, that's the, actually, no, yeah, that's the devil's holiday. No, my mom was the same holiday. way. When I was yeah. a little kid, she wouldn't yeah. let me dress up because yep. she said it was the devil's holiday. Same. And then when my same. siblings came around, she was like, okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any sweets or candies that you absolutely hate? I think I'm not a big fan of like the Swedish fish. I don't know why. Yeah. Or candy corn. I'm not really a big fan candy of that. Candy corn sucks. Yeah. Or, that's uh, your mom's yeah. parenting though. Yeah, I don't really like it. She said Halloween. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's from that. You took it very personal. It's probably from <laughs> Halloween. I was like, oh, I can't eat any of this candy. <laughs> yeah. That sucks though. Like, you didn't celebrate any Halloween? Like, what? when was your first... Oh uh, no, I still I still would like go out for a little bit and just be like, oh, I'm going to my friends and then like just change into my costume and go trick or treating. So did you have yeah. a secret costume? Yeah, I would put it in my backpack and then just be like, go run Where did you get it from? I had my dad buy it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What's the inspiration behind? How much one? Sweet woman. Oh, uh, sweet woman. Uh, so that one we actually found the vocals online from this uh, we website called Tracklib, and I was like, oh, these vocals are great. So we chopped it up and then. Uh, I wanted to make like a blues house kind of song because I was like, oh, I haven't really heard this style yet. And so that's why uh, me and Franco, Franco, or his name's The Jowls, the other DJ on that, he actually plays classical music. And so I had him play like blues chords and stuff. And so he, all that piano and the song is all him. And then I just kind of did like the drums and bass. But yeah, the inspiration was just like, um, I really like themes of like love and sacrifice, you know? And then I was like, oh, this is great. And what do you think made this one so popular? I think it's because the vocals. Like, their soul, you know? You can feel it. Who is it? You know? Yeah, Azizi Hill. Yeah. I think the track was originally recorded in like 1970. Yeah, wow. yeah. Wow. Yes. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it was, it's really cool. You typically do a lot of like, do you do like a deep dive on the research when you're making a track? Uh, if I'm sampling something, I want to know like a little bit about them, yeah. Who they are or like, Something about their career. So tell me about this person. Then. Um. See, I just know that it was recorded in 1970. You didn't. You just I don't like remember. The no, no, no. Much. I just, I just uh, like, uh, I'll do it, but then I'll forget, and I'll be like, oh, okay, this guy's cool. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What kind of supplies do you want? Like pen? Uh, yeah, just a pencil or something. Oh, I don't have a pencil. Oh, so I can't mess up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I used to be in uh, art back in like 7th and 8th grade. Really? Yeah, I thought I was so cool. So you know how to draw though? Uh, that was a long time ago. So we'll see, we'll see. This part of the show is called Palatable Palettes and In Between Bites will be auctioning off the artwork created by you and we'll give 50% of the proceeds to a community fridge or food bank of your choice in New York. So what we want you to draw here is like what you hope or believe the future holds for you. And mm. it doesn't have to be literal, it can be abstract. Okay, yeah. Speaking of like believing in the future, how did you know you were ready to like leave your job and pursue music? Like, was there like a catalyst mm. for that decision, or it was just mm. because you're gonna turn thirty? Yeah, so there was a catalyst. Uh, I think after bartending in New York for two years, I uh, was I spoke with my mom in like November 2022, I would say, 
And uh, I was like, oh, mom, I saved all this money, you know, like, uh, I can probably, like, maybe buy a house in Texas or something. And then she was like, okay, cool, but, like, how's your music going? Like, I haven't seen you do anything yet. And then uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I kind of just taken a break. I did, you know, I've been doing two or three jobs. Like, I work six days a week, so I don't really have time. And then she's like, uh, didn't you move to New York to do music? And then I was like, ah, you know, and then I was like, it was eating at me, you know, after she said that. And then I was like, okay, like, I think it's time to like, now with this money I saved up, instead of buying like a house or something, uh, let me just put it into music so I can see if after a year, if it doesn't work out, then I can just move back to Texas or whatever. But yeah, it was like that conversation with my mom. Yeah. And I was like, okay, she's right. Like I just spent two years in New York and I was just making money, you know, and not doing what I set out to do. Yeah. That's nice though that your mom is so supportive. Oh yeah. Uh, well, I started. I took like some piano lessons when I was like nine or ten, and then um, it kind of just fell off, you know. Uh, I didn't stick with it. But then I always knew I kind of had like an ear for music, or I thought I did, you know. And so, um, but my mom came around to like support me. I think. So I moved to LA in 2018, and then uh, six months like afterwards, she was like, "Oh wow, like he's he's still there. Like he really wants to do this." And so then she came around. She's like, "All right, like." I, I, I think you can do it, you know, I believe you, and stuff like that, yeah. Oh, so you moved to L.A. for music? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. And so then why did you leave and you decided to do New York music? Oh, you know, I actually had, like, this college plan, you know. Oh, right, after, right after college, I was like, okay, three years New York, or three years L.A., three years New York, um, a year in London, a year in Tokyo, what? a year in Australia. I, I was don't actually going to ask you, yeah. like, are you planning on, because yeah. you're talking about Europe, right? So yeah. I was like, is there a scene that you want to explore? That's not New York. So are you yeah. actually going to go to London after this? I want to, but I think right now, like, I've built such a good, like, community in New York that I don't want to just leave after it's just starting to build, you know? Yeah. I want to wait and see where it goes first. So mm -hmm. I'm probably going to be here for another couple more years and see how that goes. There's just so much happening in New York that, like, you have to be here. Yeah, or else true. it's so, you, or else people are like, oh, he's gone. Yeah, those, or there's, there's just so much people coming in and out. And yeah. so it's like, oh, he's he doesn't care about us anymore or something, you know? Wow. Yeah. Are you planning on releasing like an EP anytime soon? Yeah, so I actually had an album prepared, but... Really? Yeah, wow. but I was gonna release it, but a lot of the singles got ended up getting signed by different labels. So then I was like, oh, I can't release it as an album anymore. Cause you know, they took about the, the best songs yeah. and I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll just start another album. So I think I'm gonna start another album pretty soon here. Wow. I, yeah, cause I really do want like a, like a statement piece, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the singles that are cool. It defines you as Yeah. Because right now, like when yeah. I looked at your discography, it was very... It's all the place. Yeah. Yeah, it's all the place. Even like visually, yeah. the colors don't like tie in. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, yeah like visually, movie. yeah. That's why I kind of want to have, like, have a team around me. Mm -hmm. I want like the same visual arts person, but... I've yet to find someone, I guess. But like with the album, would you ever consider doing like music videos for them? Are you like a visual person? Yeah, so I did two music videos before. Um, I spent like no, five. Like there. Yeah, like there. I guess there was three, yeah. Um, three or four, but two that I spent out of my pocket. And then I was like, I spent like five or six K on both of them. So like 10 K and I was oh, like, wow. oh man, I, I was seeing like, oh, how is this, how is this gonna do or whatever. And it, it's okay, the music video is nice, but I don't think ROI wise, you know, it makes sense because I was thinking about how many like bartending shifts I had to do to get that music yeah. video. Right now it's short form content anyways. Mm -hmm. So yeah, music videos will be later. That's really annoying yeah. about the current like social media landscape, yeah. I guess. It's all just quick yeah. three second. You got to grab their do attention. Do you find yeah. yourself gravitating towards like shorter songs because of that? Like, do you ever like when you're in the studio, do you mm. gear up to make songs that are better for TikTok format or? Or are you still mm. like want to make music just for yourself? Oh yeah, so as a DJ, you actually do end up making like two versions. You make like an extended mix that you can play at the club because uh, a lot of extended mixes have, they give, they give you like a 16 or 32 bar intro or something mm -hmm. so you can mix it in, yeah. uh, which helps other DJs out. Yeah. And so I'll make that and then I'll have a radio edit to where that's for Spotify and it'll be anywhere from two to three minutes. I'll just send it to a lot of the DJs, yeah. Mm. 
They're actually really nice because I have tried to mix and like it's hard when the vocals are like right in the beginning. Yes. That makes so much more sense. Yes. Because <laughs> there's like a 16 bar, it's just like drums. Yeah. And then it's just now it's I, super now easy. Now I understand. Yeah. Now I'm like, oh, this is why they're so good. Because yeah. Because there's so much time. You're like, all right. You're like, oh, yeah. here it is. Boom. Yeah. I feel cheated right now. Actually, like I'm like, okay, I'm about to go buy a CDJ, See? find those extended. You're just getting into it though, you know? Going back to the EP, how do you yeah. look at it now? Now that it's been like six years. I look at it like, wow, the production is pretty good, but I didn't know really how to like mix as well. Like the vocals, I don't really know how to tune them. I'm, I'm so proud of it. Where yeah. do you think that you've like learned the most about producing since 2018? Or is there a person that really helped you? Yeah, so I went to Icon Collective in LA. Uh, it's like an electronic music production school. Hey there. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I don't want to make it worse. <laughs> well, I wanted to shade it in, but uh, it's just not. Well, actually, so the last thing that we were discussing was Icon Collective. Oh yeah, so yeah. Uh, I learned a lot of it from the instructors because we had like one-on-one -on -one, like every week. It was like an hour. And so I would be able to ask as many questions as I wanted to a specific mentor. So every quarter we had a different mentor too so it was nice because one person might be really good at songwriting or one person might be really good at like sound design or like mixing and mastering so I would uh, just you know that's when I would ask all these questions and they'll be like no that's not how you do it and then they like fix me right away you know mm -hmm. and that really helped out and then uh, collaborations over the years because people know different things in production you can do so much and so you pick up little things here and there and you're like oh wow like this is great like that saved me so much time, you know? Like maybe even just like learning a hotkey mm -hmm. or something, yeah, so. What's yeah. something that like a lot of people might turn to you to yeah. ask advice for? How do I get a DJ gig in New York? Oh. Yeah, I think a lot of people are like, hey, how do you start DJing? Or like, how do you, like, how do I get a gig here? Well then, yeah, yeah. how did you? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think like the first, after I quit my job, uh, I uh, was like, okay, how do I get a DJ gig? Cause I was thinking that to myself too and I didn't really know, so I just kept going out and like trying to meet as many people as I could. And I kept showing up to like people's events and then eventually uh, they, they were like, oh, you DJ too? And then they're like, they asked me to like DJ for one of them, you know? Mm -hmm. And at first, you know, you just do a bunch of uh, uh, like unpaid open gigs, decks. just yeah, oh. open decks too. Yeah, and that helps out a ton. Um, so I would go out to like every week, it'd be like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If there was like two or three DJ events in one night, I would try and go to all of them. Yeah, so like I would go to like maybe six to nine events in one week and I would just try and just shake hands and say hi to as many people as possible. And um, yeah, that's that helped out a ton, yeah. Because over, over time, people will start noticing like, oh, this guy keeps showing up, you know? Yeah, and he's yeah. serious about the community, yeah, yeah. What was the process of getting signed to Steve Aoki's label? Uh, so I, I actually just, uh, there, they had this demo drop on this platform car, called Verp or something, V-I-R-P-P -P or something, and then I just dropped a demo. Um, the VP of Denmark actually emailed me. He was like, oh, hey, I kind of like this, but do you have other songs? And so I was like, oh, man, this is my chance, you know? Uh, so I sent him, like, like, a SoundCloud playlist of, like, 12 tracks, you know, just everything I had at the time. And then he was like, uh, yeah, we like this one, actually. And I was like, no way. And I kept just looking at the email and was like, Oh, it says Dimmock, and I just kept checking, and he kept seeing more people, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm looping in my A&R, and then I was like, oh, cool, like, this is happening, and then they liked it, and uh, yeah, it was a track that I had for a while, actually, I recorded it in 2019, so, uh, back in LA, and I just didn't know, like, the right time to release it and stuff, so, it kind of worked out perfectly, yeah, to be on Dimmock, yeah. Oh, you guys want to see my drawing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, you know, it's uh, it's almost there. 
I haven't drawn since like eighth grade, really. So it's supposed to be a Pegasus. Um, I got this as a it's like. Not that bad, it's not that bad, you know. It's pretty good. Like you, yeah. you know that it's, it's Pegasus. Yeah, you, I mean the wings helps out, but you know I don't look at the legs too much. <laughs> I, I forgot how to draw, you know. Uh, but I was at a birthday party with my friend Elena. Um, we knew each other since like middle school. We we're actually in art class together back in Texas. Oh. She lives in New York. She gave me a black because she had this birthday party and she gave everyone horses and she gave me like a black Pegasus. I was like, oh, this is so cool. I didn't ask her what it meant, but I was like, okay, maybe that's what she thinks of me. And I was like, I'll just draw this. So it's it's somebody else's interpretation of who you are. Yes, then. of like how but I that live my literally life. makes sense because yeah. you're just talking about how you want your audience to be happy. So it's never yeah. it's more about what you can do for other people. Yeah, kind of. I mean, because it's, it's kind of hard to explain myself, but I think other people are better at explaining who you are because they see it from an outside perspective. Of course, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. How do you guys like the drawing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't want to shade Wait, it you in. Have to sign it. I'll have to sign it. Yeah. Uh, I guess Sangaray. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was funny because your reaction, you're like, oh. Oh yeah. I was like, they have a tail, right? <laughs> they do have tail. Yeah. yeah. I forgot. Well, the Pegasus. Yeah. So. Um, in theory. Yeah. yeah, they don't. Well, it's a mythical creature. So oh. 